Hello everyone. My name is Charles and I'm a solutions engineer with Datto. Today we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into secure deployment best practices of Datto's backup and continuity appliances. To showcase the features that we think are important from a security perspective, I'm going to use one of Datto's pre-built appliances. But all of these settings are going to be exactly the same, even if you're deploying a Cirrus appliance with Cirrus Virtual, where we're giving you an OVA that you can drop into Hyper-V or VMware, or Cirrus Image, where you're installing this operating system on top of supported hardware. But I think this conversation starts best with patch management. Right? We really want to ensure that when you're deploying a Datto device, you are getting the most up-to-date security updates, any other critical updates that you're going to need. To do so, you really just need to click on the Configure tab and pop into Device Settings. What you're going to be looking for is on the side panel, the word is Update window, which when you click, you're immediately going to get a view into when your updates are running, what channel they're coming from. It's a good way to just verify updates are happening and they're not going to impact production. But even beyond patching, when you're deploying new agents, you have something that you should be keeping in mind. Because right? by default, all data in motion to our data centers and at rest within them will be encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption. But you can also encrypt your backups locally, offering a third location where your backups would be encrypted. Now keep in mind, this will take more space on the appliance, and you also need to ensure that you keep this passphrase somewhere secure because you will be the only person with it. But again, it's another route to secure the data that you are backing up. But even outside of that, right, when we're talking about using the appliance, spinning up VMs that are, say, a copy of your SQL server or your critical file server in the event of a disaster, or even just spinning up a file restore to get to critical data, you want to ensure that these are only running when you need them, right? Once you no longer have need for a virtualization, it's important to remove it, to clean up after yourself so that you have as few copies of this data out there as possible. You don't have to remember, though. You don't have to add this as another manual touch point to your backup process. You can come back to configure, click on device settings, and this time what you're going to be looking for is mounted restore alert. Because what you can do is you can actually turn this on and ensure that the system will alert you if a certain period of time has passed where a virtualization has been running. So you can figure out what's acceptable to you there. And again, give yourself another route to ensure that your security posture is as strong as possible. But keep in mind that this data appliance, all of these data appliances, whether we're talking about virtual imaged or this pre-built appliance, they can serve as file shares too. You can come up here and you can actually create a NAS share. You can create an iSCSI share. This way you're able to present data to your partners with the appliance and also back it up to our data centers. But it's important to understand the policy and compliance requirements of the environment in which you're deploying the Datto device. Right? You don't want to jeopardize compliance by selecting unsecure file share options. Another thing to keep in mind here is to enable SFTP instead of FTP right, because SFTP will require authentication and it will encrypt the data as it's in transit across your network. Again, just another way to ensure that all of the features you're using with the Datto appliance, you're using securely. But really that leaves me with one last piece I wanna talk about, which is access to the appliance. Now, Datto recommends that you employ the least privilege model anytime you're dealing with access to these appliances. And people can access these appliances through the Datto partner portal, you can also do it locally, but we do disable local access by default. It's a way that we shrink the attack surface because if you don't need that functionality, having it off by default kind of precludes that being a way that somebody could get into the appliance. But with that being said, if you do need to enable it, you come right back to device settings and the first pane you will see is going to be this local access control where you can very easily enable local access. Now, keep in mind, we do disable it as a form of extra security. So if you are choosing to enable it, replace this form of control with another. Maybe that's locking the data appliance in a secure server closet where you can see everybody who's accessing. That being said, you can set credentials on the appliance very easily. You can ensure you're cycling passwords, that people have the exact amount of permissions that they're going to need. You can also join this appliance to the Active Directory domain and use Active Directory credentials, 
But I really wouldn't recommend that because then an attacker would only need to compromise Active Directory and then they can get into the backups. But with that being said, these are just a few important features from the security perspective that we think everyone should be aware of. If anybody has any questions or wants to dive in any deeper, please reach out to your account representative. We're going to be more than happy to help out. Thanks for taking the time today.